I don't know, but we've got company, as in lots of. Well, if they pull up a chair, I would be happy to beat them with it. The man who never had his fill. It was a cold and snowy eve. Certainly no night for a man without a home to be walking these grey and endless streets. Inside the pizza parlour, George Reed spun a lively tune on his harmonica. The local children giggled and pointed excitedly at the harmonica man as their parents glowed with approval. His reward would be all the pizza he could eat, six pies at least, and a warm bed in one of these folks' homes. He knew they were good for it. But when he tucked in for the night, George had not had his fill. As the years and calories stacked up, most men would have got older and fatter. Yet for all he consumed, George only got thinner as he washed from town to town. Tapeworm! Tonight he plied his trade with some grannies and orderlies in a nursing home. His harmonica filled the room with joy. After devouring three helpings of pork chops and mashed potatoes, he eyed the plate of the old woman next to him. Juice dribbled down his chin. Go ahead, Georgie, she said. You're such a good boy, you shouldn't have to starve. But George had not had his fill. Early the next morning, he was already on the freeway with his thumb in the air. Where are you headed? said the man in the truck. Nowhere, said George. Anywhere. It was a new decade, and tonight George played to an all but empty bar in the city. He had lost a lot of weight. Afterwards, the only woman in the joint took the stool next to him and asked him his name. The bartender leaned over the counter. You don't know this guy, Mary. George is famous, being all over the tri-state area. With a wink, he added, man's insatiable. And that night, George proved it as he buried his face in Mary's beaver. Holy woodland creatures! And a boy, George! And a boy, George! Play that harmonica, she purred. But even after five trips to heaven and back, he had not had his fill. The morning after was an awkward affair as they stared at each other over coffee. One wanted to feel more, the other just wanted to feel. In his final days, George was all skin and bones. I can relate, except for the skin part. His last meal had been a mistake. 
It was on a sidewalk one night in a small suburban town that he came across the boy. Hungrily and with an agonized grimace, he opened his mouth to beg for help. Out came a cacophony of wheezes and toots, but the boy understood. Wait, you mean Jorge ate his harmonica? Once he was alone, George Reed looked at the candy bar he held in one hand and began to cry. <laughs> They found George's half-eaten body in a market next town over. In one hand, he held a knife. In the other, a fork. Chunks of flesh had been torn from his chest and his arms. Blood framed an eerie smile. The wind that morning blew fierce, and as it whistled through the hole he'd carved out of his own neck, the harmonica man played his last song in this world. There were gawkers, and many knew him. They shared stories of how he'd filled them with hope, filled them with life. They, at least, had had their fill. <clears throat> Especially Mary. The End Our goat. Then let's put out some lights of our own. Bust a cap in those mother fudges before they douse the light. You know, we never finished talking about you kidnapping Paula. I didn't kidnap her. You hauled her out of a skip. Isn't that illegal in some states? What did she say? Nothing. Not for weeks. I was afraid to even touch her, you know? Like she didn't belong to me. To anyone. But something changed. There was a phone call. Bones. Put that on hold, G. We've got company.
Now, what's this about a phone call? Me and Paula were eating when the phone rang. Suddenly, she slams her fork down and says, Don't answer it! Creepy. First thing she ever said to me. But I got up to take the call. Johnson, you should have seen her. She jumped out of her chair, ran to the phone, and ripped it right off the wall. Whoa! Then she came and put her arms around me and started crying. It was the craziest, weirdest, sexiest thing I have ever seen. I have been hers ever since. Don't like teeth? The gun laws here are very strict. Haven't you wondered why they don't shoot back? You and I are violating almost every rule in the book. Heck, I'm practically made of teeth. Calls? No, sir. Maybe it's from Paula. Or at least someone with answers. Is that you? When will this fucking torture end? <clears throat> From hottie to hamburger, just like that. Chase away the darkness, at least in short bursts. Just look at them. Fiery sprinkles in a great big chocolatey sky. Johnson, shut up.
this fucking darkness! What the shit is that? Let's take a closer look. Well, hi ho Name's Christopher. Now, don't y'all be afraid I ain't gonna bite. Trust me. You see, I'm what you call a mixture of beast and human. Oh, best of both worlds, my pappy said. Hey, but what are you doing around these parts? Ain't you a mortal? Why should I tell you? All I see is demon. Well, shucks. You gotta look underneath the leathery exterior. Deep down, I am a sensitive and understanding listener. Some asswipe named Fleming stole my girl and took her to his castle. I am here to take her back. Meaning you are on a quest to kick the Prince of Evil's ass? Holy shit! <laughs> Oh, I want in on some of this action. How can I help, huh? How can I? Well, I hope that you're offering more than just enthusiasm. I tell you what, I get pretty hungry, and I just love her of them white gems. You get enough of those, and we can trade. With the right incentive, I might even be able to introduce you to some real product. Know what I mean? <laughs> Magnifico. Okay, then chuck them sparklies right down the hatch. <laughs> Go on, feed me! Ah! Happy trails! Looking for any rare items? I'm surprised Christopher hasn't had a visit from the GEA. Mm, you read about gem busts all the time. Y'all take care now.
What's this? Sushi with a dick? These guys may look ugly, but they're actually quite useful. Are they friendly? Yes, I kept one as a pet. Hit them with light, and they'll keep you safe. Cemetery. Really? I had no idea. No, there isn't. No need to get snippy. It's just this wasn't here before. Since when do demons get buried? Since I came to town. We would be buried together. Thank <laughs> you. 